Latropolis, the ancient metropolis, granted us safety and prosperity. However, our greed bred more greed, and in the end, a terrible experiment caused apocalypse. Ratkind, once so great, were scattered into the wilderness. We're the only ones who made new settlements. From now on, we must protect the settlement. Yes, 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 we have to protect our settlement indeed. Welcome, welcome everyone to another run of Retropolis the Numer here and I will be your guide. We'll be starting a new settlement today, we're gonna be playing a shaman. We're gonna be playing the second one here, the new one, which I didn't play yet. Um, the advisor, Sinner, whenever you redraw, minus 6% movement speed to all enemies for 6 seconds for every discarded card. Uh, I don't know how super useful that is, although, will they stop in their tracks if I keep cycling my discards? That would be very interesting, wouldn't it? And then Eclipse, uh, remove 1 plus 1 per leader level random deployed allies, apply 1 plus 1 per leader level curse for every removed allies. So basically you stop them in their tracks and then slowly the curse eats them up alive. What a wonderful way to kill our enemies here. Great. <laughs> okay, then we got the level chosen here. I will uh, I'll play on pollution 4, last time we played on pollution 3, we're gonna play on pollution 4. I went up to 18, but this was offline a couple of years ago. I mean offline, not on YouTube. Anyway, uh, so yeah, pollution 4, a wave cycle is decreased by 5 seconds, so that means enemies come 5 seconds sooner. This is like a huge uh, bump up in difficulty actually. I will still I will play random, and I will keep playing random probably until we... Um, get to the point where I will think that it's gonna be really hard to win so I will then start choosing whatever I think it's the best for a chosen hero so random we don't know what kind of enemies or bonuses we're gonna get I wonder oh no we're just gonna get one of these three selected okay anyway enough jibber jabber let's start here so for those who are new, if you want to see me play an introductionary video for this game, tell you more details about it and stuff like that, you can find the playlist in the bottom. Let me pause. And uh, yeah, it's going to take you to the first ever video I published on this game, playing something nice, simple and easy, probably a merchant leader or something like that. And well, you can also stay around. So this game is like a horde defense game. You have towers on two sides here and the enemies will be coming from one of these two directions. They first they're going to take your walls down, this wall and this wall here, and then they will go. And if they attack your town hall, you lose. So you have to put like, you have to raise your economy, uh, raise your army. So right now we have uh, we have guards and you have Accolade. It's also a deck builder, so we're going to be like getting new cards, improving our deck, more or less standard game building stuff stuff there. Uh, what's interesting about this game is how you redraw cards. Basically, uh, you have this button here, which you can use to redraw the cards, but then it goes on cooldown, and then you have to either choose to pay a fee to draw again right away, or wait until the cooldown is done, and we're gonna be like trying to balance that thing out anyway. This, uh, these are uh, these are shaman specific cards that this shaman leader starts with. It starts with an acolyte. Someone wants Kel Rattan when that. Okay, and then Soul Flower. Uh, apply one curse to target group plus sixty gold for every applied curse. Okay, it's a pretty good card, but only if there's like a lot of enemies around. So this card is like a weak economy card for like building up early on. So I'm not expecting to like do much here, but as long as this is free, I'm gonna keep redrawing. Remove one random allies, apply one curse, that does nothing right now. Okay, let's redraw. So here you can see the price, it's 30 right now. So as long as we play, like for example, this one earns us like 33 gold, so it's gonna pay for another redraw. So we can redraw if we want, and this labor plus 60 gold, we're gonna play definitely. And well, we're gonna build a house so we can play labor some more. But uh, yeah, one of the weaker economic starts, at least we're getting triple cheese. Cheese? Uh, plus 30 gold for every cheese card in your hand right now this costs 40 and only gives us 30 so it's not worth to play it so you never play the last cheese that's pretty much pretty much the rule here and well now we only had two cheese in our hands so yeah our income will suffer because of it i don't think we'll be able to do like crazy stuff here but i'm gonna play as many grains as i can 
and then I'll probably st stop like super drawing here. Okay, now we have to stop. So basically now we wait for these to fill up. We're getting a little bit of tax here, six per every five seconds or so, I think. Uh, other classes are much better at making money. Um, so yeah, that's that, I guess. I mean, this is really good, Soulflower. We could maybe call in the wave early and get plus 55 gold and start playing the Soulflower. Is this the best tactic here? It might be. How much gold will we get if we wait? 10 seconds, 12 seconds? I don't know. Maybe not 55, well, it's 45 now. Okay, let's just call them in early. That's something I usually almost never play. Okay, so let me see. Apply one curse to target group, plus 60 gold for every applied curse. Oh, okay, so we play it on a... Uh, on our wall here, but we need to wait for the enemies to come closer. Did that actually work? No, it didn't. They, they weren't close enough. Okay, no, they did get... No, they get slowed down because I... Uh, I used my advisor when I redrew. Okay. Right, um, okay, how much gold is it? Oh, that's pretty good, 60 gold. Okay, so while these enemies are here, that's actually very worth it to play because we can redraw twice with it. Uh, that's a strong card actually, that's a really strong card. In, it encourages active play with enemies on board, but uh, I don't mind that. Okay. So I'm gonna keep farming this this two enemies for gold here until they almost destroy the wall. Then we're gonna put down a defender and go for them. All right. We also will have another uh, group of enemies coming from the other side, so have to be careful about that. So basically, right now we are trading our wall HP for gold. There we go. So my tactic, like the my, my the way I play is, as, so, as, as soon as I have the full hand of cards, I pause, check everything I have, decide on my play, and then I play card after a card, because it's a real-time game, it's not a turn-based one. So like, I want to be as efficient as possible. So, yeah. Anyway, this group has to die now, so we're gonna be working on that. Uh, so I'm gonna place down a Acolyte, probably. Although, why is this curse not, like, healing these? Oh! Wait, what? Oh, I totally misunderstood this. Wait, what? Wait. I'm a little bit confused right now. I apply curse to my people? But how was I getting gold then? I guess it also applies to enemies maybe? I don't even know right now. Okay, let's see what we get in here. So we are learning, let's see, new card, breed. Ooh, breed, such a good card, dude. I don't know if I have the economy to support it, but uh, I really want it. Teleports soul enemies in one range to the spawn point. That's a good card. That's a really good card. That's a good card. I like this card. But that's like a late game card. Okay, I really want to breed here. Like, getting lots of reticence, it's like a really good thing in this game. So we're gonna be trying to do that. Okay, I'm gonna play that. So I think... Okay, let's see. Yeah, I don't think the soul flower really applies to these. Like, how was I getting the gold then? Let me see. So this is on my people. So if I play it... Yeah, I don't get any gold. I was just wasting gold there. What was I earning the gold on then, though? Yeah, that's super weird. That's super weird. Okay. Huh. 
That card is even stronger than. I thought it applies on enemies, but it applies to a group. That makes way more sense now. Why is it played on a wall? Because it actually gets played on my people. Okay. Right. Okay, what do you have, merchant? Mushroom farm, it's okay. Soul building active. So collect souls to power a building new ability striker to when you click on the icon i think it collects both my and enemy souls i hope cannibal remove a target ally plus five max hp to target group <laughs> okay <laughs> so they eat them up and get more more immune to curse when deployed plus one card hoard nah house another soul flower i mean it is a really good card I kind of want to get my economy super going right now. I'm just a little bit worried. I will not be able to pull it off, but let's try. Um, like, I like to buy defensive walls. Remove a target tally for the next 15 seconds plus 3. I don't need that. I probably don't need the house, although it will give me a nice reticent boost right away. I will not have to wait for the breeds, which is probably a good idea. I just don't want to spend all my cash here. Okay, I, I think I can do without the rest, though. Okay. Well, of course, wall. We always buy the wall. Okay, you know what? Let's uh, play... Let's play the guards here and let's curse them for cash. I'm gonna keep drawing then. What's that? Oh, that's my advisor that slows down all the enemies. Okay. Right, Acolyte, Soul Flower. What how are we doing with cash? We're doing okay ish. Okay, not enough reticence. Okay, that's like a little bit of a problem, but okay. Okay, there's the house, so that's good. We're gonna build it. Let's put another. Mm, should have played pottery first, that's okay. Come on, house. You were scouting around the new territory when you found a hideout built inside the tree. When you knocked on the door, you could hear a small voice answer. Shoo! We have no food to offer you, nor any free space. Please do us a favor and leave us alone. You can tell that the owner of the voice possesses a good heart and you want to recruit him. Asylum! This is from Slate Aspire. Plus two cards whenever you redraw. Plus five seconds redraw cooldown. Oh, okay. That's a really good card, actually. I want that because we're gonna be like this cooldown will go up but i usually don't rely on cooldown anyway i usually just redraw if i can i think we have strong enough economy to pull it off so you can also delete a card so we declog our deck a little bit i think we're gonna be playing people down and using soul flower to earn money rather than grain so grain is going to go away here so basically how's this gonna work i'm gonna play the the uh oh come on oh yeah the acolyte here and then the guards and then we're gonna play now we can play that we can actually play the breed then i'm gonna play a couple of soul flowers and it should earn us oh yeah almost 200 gold for each one yeah it's a really strong card we can still buy something here if we want to since we are good with gold now remove a target ally plus no i don't want that I mean, I could grab this little bit extra gold, but this thing will get outscaled by Soul Flower by a huge margin, actually. I wonder. Immune to Curse. When deployed, plus one card hoard. Yeah, I don't think Soul Flower works on Skirmishers. We could try. But I really don't think it will. So let's not. And I didn't play the pottery. <laughs> oh, dude, like... Okay. Okay, Acolyte, Soul Flower, Soul Flower. So these people will be dying rapidly, but they will be earning us a lot of money in the process. Breathe, good. Okay, so enemies come from the left side now, so this is the side we're gonna be playing on. Okay, cheese, cheese. Can we breathe? We can breathe. Okay, uh, let's play the Soul Flower, good. I mean, of course, you can play without pausing if you like. It's not really mandatory to like play like I do. I just think I save up a little bit more time and it's actually less stressful because like yeah, it's easier. I guess I can just grab a card and just not play it. And that also like kind of slows down the game a lot. But look at our money, dude. This is insane. This is absolutely insane. Okay, I think they overdid it a little bit with this one. Like, it's kind of crazy. What does this do? Remove one random ally. Plum curse for every removed allies to all enemies. 
Uh, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. I mean, we have so many super cheap people that we can keep going. I mean, of course, we curse them. I mean, curse should be killing them, no? Having escaped the ruined city, we have been looking for a safe place for a long time. Many have decided to become ordinary rats living a wild life. Now we are the only civilized rats inhabiting an established settlement. You must secure the last standing settlement. Fortunately, supplies we have scavenged from the city will be helpful. Well, our city did not end up in flames. This is a lie. But anyway, if you survive at least 10 waves, as you can like, then get the bonus in your next playthrough. Uh, so we can get plus 3 ratism, grain level 2 card, or get a chief card. Can't attack when deployed, add 5 ephemeral skirmisher cards to your hand. What's a skirmisher? Um, I don't think this is a really good card. Unless you want a whole bunch of skirmishers. And I think skirmishers can't get the curse applied to them. I'll just grab the three that isn't here. Doesn't really matter. Okay, let's see what this is. Uh, so I can get a new card. Let's see what it is. Ambush, Demolition, or Hawk Thrower. Active. Every 40 seconds, launch one Hedgehog to deal 20 damage and slows down enemies by 20%. I never saw this building again before. I think we unlocked it last time. It does sound kind of ridiculous. It's not really that powerful though. So I might just go for a house here or some gold. You could also grab Demolition. This card has like some really good uses for upgrading cards. It's a little bit early to be picking cards like that though. Yeah. I guess I could grab this and put it on the right side so like I don't have problems on that side. And I can keep on like... Uh, Earning cash here by soul flowering my people. Oh yeah, yeah, they are dying. They are dying. So yeah, we curse them up, earn like a shitload of gold, and then they die. And they're like, <laughs> uh, so what's the range of this thing? Okay, so I think this is best built here, like because it's hitting like right in front of the tower. So here's where we're gonna build it. Okay, let's uh, let's start building a new group of people here. I think with pottery first, of course, then acolyte. Jeez, I mean, obviously the downside of this is that we don't have a standing army since like everyone more or less dies. But uh, this goes really well with acolyte because the acolyte once it dies, it summons a scale raton, and then scale raton does the same. And if you can get some really good soul buildings, uh, we'll be able to like. I'll pretty much do even better. <laughs> oh, that love. That love. Turn it back. King. Now. Ah, damn, these curses. Why is our leader so heartless? I don't know. It's pretty, pretty bad for my rats. They're dying left and right. But uh, I'm getting rich on top of it. Cry of Widows. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. So sometimes when I get this event, I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? We didn't lose anyone yet. I think my death toll is like 20, 30 by now. Leader, the families of those killed in battle cry out in sorrow and demand just payment as well as burial rights. Rats clinging to the bodies of the casualties of war fill the streets in front of the town hall. Their demands are shared by many, but we are currently short on funds. What should we do? <laughs> well, we are not really short on funds. Every time this event lies about something, we can. They have my condolences. Remove my heart. Bureau rights. They should be paying death taxes plus 200 gold. Or give them a proper burial plus one leader level, lose half of your gold. Well, I'm gonna go with remove one card, that's the most useful for me right now. You have my condolences. Our thoughts and prayers. Oh, I shouldn't do that. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. Okay, that's a little bit harsh, you know. But it's like. So when something bad happens in the world, so many people come and say thoughts and prayers. Some believe it, like from their heart, I know, but you know, sometimes actually helping means way more. But yeah, I think. That I overdid it there. Hopefully you forget me. Anyway, forgive me. Not forget me. 
So I can start removing the cheeses, or I can remove one of the soldiers. I don't want to remove the soldiers because they are my piggy bank now. So yeah, I'm going to be removing cheeses. I want to remove all the three cheeses from the deck if possible. Repair, offering, or Midas hand. For the next 30 seconds, plus 30 gold whenever a unit is killed by a curse. Does this count my units? Oh boy. I mean, this works great with Soul Flower, right? If people are dying all over the place, then Soul Flower gets weaker, but then Midas Hand gets stronger. If people are not dying off, then Soul Flower is stronger, and I don't really care about the Midas Hand. So I really don't have to worry about anything. If I grab here this and keep playing it, ah. Uh, it says unit. Curse takes damage equal to the number of stacks every five seconds. Right. I mean, I have the opportunity to remove the cheese though, but uh, I think... I think what's better than killing your people for soul money is turning them into the gold in the process and like earning even more. Okay. So yeah, let's place some people here and yeah, let's start. Uh, let's continue doing what we are doing. Okay, we're getting an event here. Can we get it? Oh, here's our... Here's our... Uh, Silent though, look at it. This thing helped us so much by giving us more cards per redraw, really boosting our economy. Look at that, already 5,000 gold. That's really strong. Like this, this run would be pollution 18 worthy, I think. We have such a strong start. Too bad we are playing only a pollution like what, four <laughs> or five, four, I think. Anyhow, let's see what they want. Talent pool. I've gathered the newest graduates from our most prestigious educational institutions. What graduates? Nobody graduates here. Everyone dies in like <laughs> their first one minute of service. The bureaucrat proudly presents before you a group of white-eyed rats eager to serve the city. You trust the bureaucrat enough to know that all of them are more than capable for the job. Unfortunately, budget problems mean you have to pick just one of them this time. Who will it be? We can hire a clown advisor plus one second to the next wave whenever you play five cards. Okay, that's that's nice. Investor, get three random building cards. No, thank you. Hire an appraiser advisor plus one more option for treasure chests. Uh, let's grab the appraiser, I think. Oh, looks like one of those from the pictures as well. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's the it's the hedgehog. Okay, so right now, okay, we played that. We put Minus Flower here, and I messed messed up. Should have played Pottery first, but that's fine. And now I guess I want to start putting people on this side for defenses because enemies come from there. Yeah, that's the downside of this whole thing, right? So I want to be putting people on this side now. Oh, I don't have enough reticence. Ooh, well, we need some people to die, like, pretty, pretty fast here. Okay, there's the merchant incoming, so we're happy to see that. Even more wonderful cards for us. I'm making some misplays here, don't mind that too much. Okay, I think... Well, there's still plenty of people there. Okay, play this here, play Midas Hand, Pottery. Again, I didn't play Pottery first. So Pottery scales with number of cards in your hand, so you should always play it first. Don't be like me, don't fail so badly. Oh, it's raining, look at that. Day 5 begins, let's talk to the merchant. Another Acolyte, hmm. Tempting. Mushroom, after 80 seconds plus 100 gold, while ongoing, minus one second activation time for every collected soul. Okay. I mean, it's alright-ish. Not as strong as Breed though, so, and it does take two ratisons while they're working on picking mushrooms. So, Teeth, for next 15 seconds, plus 20 gold whenever a unit is summoned. Okay. Hmm. That's... So, whenever this thing dies, we get plus 20 gold. But I think, uh, I think Mira's hand that's just way better. So this will just be weird. Marionette, after 15 seconds plus 4 gold for every surviving ally. Uh, this is not what we are doing right now, so no. Oh, we're definitely buying the defensive wall. We get a level 2 one actually, we're gonna get a... Uh, yeah, I don't want skirmishers. Immune to curse. I don't need immune to curse cards. That's pretty bad. I'm gonna grab another acolyte though. And then now we can remove the guards with 
Pokestix. Yeah, I don't think... I think the rest of the deck is stronger than what's offered here, so... So, nothing there. Ah, uh, wait, the cards. There we go. So, I guess we're still not gonna start playing here. We let these guys die off. Nothing really special here. I'm gonna put up another defensive wall if we can. There we go. Nice. Okay, guys. This is weird. Okay, they got stuck, like, right in the middle of it. Yeah, that's super weird, actually. Okay, I don't think... Yeah, we checked the merchants already. Um, repair is a decent card, but I don't think we'll need it. This run is going so good that, you know, I'm not expecting problems. Okay, pottery first. Yay! Good job, Neo. Good job. You are the inspiration to us all. We're gonna get to 99,000 gold, like, pretty fast in this run. Unless we slip up and lose, because, like, we don't have enough people on board. We could pick, like, it could really easily happen that all of my people die at the same time, and then this thing jump, just jumps to the wall, goes and kills my <laughs> thing. That would be ridiculous. But it could happen, I guess. There's no way it happens, by the way. That's like... Chances of that are minimal because we are spamming people all the time. Like, the curses cannot kill my people as fast as we are spamming them, so... And, like, my breeds are starting to, like... Really, like, ramp up, so... Oh, let's open the chest. Mm. Let's see, what else can we get? A watchtower, a graveyard, active, draw five military cards from card tomb. Eh. That's only good if you're not doing the big economy strategy that I'm doing. A watchtower is alright. I mean, expansion card... I don't really have a building that I want to expand. I could expand my tower, I guess, but I'm gonna grab the watchtower instead. Just to be a little bit more robust to enemies and stuff. Anyway, let's start building up the army on this side. Although we do have the hedgehog thing, so maybe we don't need to do it. Wait, new event. Hello. I is the Morpheus, is the Ratrius. I only tell you the truth. You're not sure how you got into the situation, but before you knew it, a strange, slightly deranged scientist was trying to sell you something. In the blue box is something you're familiar with, something that will strengthen what you already know. In the red box is the truth that will lead you city to a new age and down the rabbit hole you go. That sounds a bit over dramatic for a sales pitch, yeah. What do you think this is? Matrix? It's not. So you can get a strange card. <laughs> Plus 100 max HP to target ally. Okay, or expansion card. Upgrade a target building. I'm gonna go with expansion here. I'm just gonna skip with what I know. Uh, the strange does just doesn't like go well with like the the type of village that we are building here. Okay, so we're gonna place down a tower here, and I'm actually thinking, yeah, I'm just gonna continue building my army on this side. I'm gonna use the expansion on the hawk thrower. There we go. So now it's a little bit more powerful. For every 20, 40 seconds, launch two hedgehogs that deal 30 damage and slow down enemies by 20%. There we go. And, well, I'm just gonna uh, continue, like, uh, building my economy on this side. I just have to make sure that we don't die on the other side. We have some buildings there, so we're probably fine, I hope. But, you never know with this kind of thing. So hopefully, hopefully it's gonna be okay. Right, so here come the enemies. Oh, it's a boss wave as well. <laughs> so we're fighting a boss wave with two acolytes, a guard tower, and a hedgehog tank. Yeah, okay. I think we're fine. Alright, uh, middle sand. Jeez, that, that. So for the for the soul flower, it's better if you have lots of people stacked up on one side. So that's why I'm not switching. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, let's do the eclipse. There we go. Curse them up. Wonderful. And yeah, I don't know. I'll just switch here real fast to play some cards and go back just to see how things are looking here. I think they're looking fine. Things are dying, so that's good. Okay, okay. I think the 
the the arrow tower like to kill everything. But we will launch the hatchcocks here. Three, two, one, ready, launch, fire! Hatchcocks away. Where are they? Oh, there they are. Well, that was a little bit anticlimactic. Oh yeah, that they did kill everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, did the game save? Get a legendary card, recruiter. Add one random ephemeral military card to your hand whenever you draw. Add one random ephemeral military card to your hand whenever you you draw. Now that's gonna be a pain in the behind. Uh, okay, we can upgrade a selected card. That's really strong. Let's see what the legendary cards are. Spirit Shard, plus 300 gold. Permanent, minus one gold to this card whenever an ally dies. Uh, wait, what? Minus one or plus one? It's a minus one, so this is a really bad card. So with this card, you want to keep your people alive, and that's not what we are about this run. Veiling, for the next 10 seconds, apply one curse to all units in form range whenever a soul spawns in target range. Okay, Sparrow Nest. Every 10 seconds, deal 20 AoE damage to the closest enemy stuns for one second. Every 10 seconds. Yeah, I don't really like that. That's good. All of these cards suck. That means we can upgrade a card and we're definitely going to be doing that. So we can upgrade this. But uh, my favorite card right now is Breed. This is the this is the foundation of our economy. People. People who we are cursing and turning to gold. We are extracting, extracting gold from their gold, from their veins. And then what's left over, it's solidified and sold to the highest bidder. There we go. Breed. Wonderful. Okay, and system message auto saved successfully. It's 30 minutes, so this is the great place to like, uh, well, uh, make a cut. And I will see you back probably in two days with another episode. Hopefully enjoyed this one. I think we are super powerful. This will be nice, easy run. Looking forward to it. Let me know what you think about this game. Like, did you play it? Are you successful in it? I'm pretty successful. I have like very high win rate. Some people are struggling, but I think you really need to be good at this deck management kind of things. I know it looked kind of easy when I do it, but when I was starting this game, I was also struggling a bit until I realized how powerful it is to pause the game think about what you're gonna play so um, i almost played like a turn-based game really i pause play out all my cards click this redraw everything then things happen in real time a little bit you know and then rinse and repeat so yeah comment suggest criticize i wish you to have a wonderful day do something nice be kind to each other and let's make the world a better place together one day at a time thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one the new year signing out bye bye